Hello, welcome back. G'day. Um, in the background here, you can see there's another YouTube uh, channel running. Probably my, oh, it is my favourite um, music review site. It's the Sea of Tranquility. Search it up, have a look at it. It's pretty good stuff. That's Pete Pardot in the top right. He's the host of the show. Today they're um, giving their top five Men of War albums. And, um, yeah, this inspired me to do my own, my own top five. Um, yeah, I've been listening to Men of War oh, since the, the late 80s. And, um, yeah, just a fun to get back into them again. Um, so we'll, we'll stop that and go to, to, to my list. My list is, off, is just off the fly. I haven't made, made, haven't made one up yet. So we'll see how we go. So see you guys. Thank you for that video, by the way. It was a, it was a cracker. Uh, so go back to Apple Music. That's what I use to listen to my music. And we'll go to Metal War, of course. So here we go. These are all the Metal albums that are available on Apple Music. Or well, most of them anyway. Um, yeah, there, there are missing a few of them, but it, it, these are the ones that I like anyway, that are in the top five are, are here. So I'll start off by saying a bit of an introduction into to myself and how I come across Metal War. Um, started buying music mid 80s. Um, mainly got into um, probably Def Leppard, the first band, and then all the hair metal stuff started coming out. Three after about three or four years of that, then you start to adventure a bit more and get into the heavier stuff, the Overkills and Megadeths and Slayer and blah blah blah, all that sort of, all that sort of gear. Then I got into the the progressive sort of metal stuff, the Queensrÿche and Face Warning. Anyway, I happened to walk into a CD store one day in, um, oh, I live in Australia, New South Wales, in a place called St Mary's. Walk into the store, as you walk in, there's always the new display at the front, all the new albums are out on that. Saw so, Triumph of Steel sitting there. Um, as, you all, as we all know what the cover looks like, it's pretty, um, it's a pretty impressive sort of cover. So yeah, as I was saying before, um, yeah, when you see that cover, and especially being around, I was early 20s, maybe 21, maybe, 20, 21. Um, when I was a kid, I was into all the, you know, the He-Mans, the Conan Barbarians, you see that sitting there, and you have to buy it. Got no choice. So I picked it up, put it in the, in the car on the way home. Um, it was only about a 10 minute drive, but there's a first first track nearly half an hour, so I had to keep on driving around until the first track was finished. And um, yeah, what a what an epic epic piece that is. But anyway, we'll talk about that when we get to it. So I better go through my list now, don't I? Um, so I'll go back to the list. All right, number five. Um, yeah, thinking about this, um, probably yeah, it's hard picking it. They're all they're all pretty good stuff, aren't they? Okay, our first thing I will pick up notice is um, on Apple Music. There's two versions of the early albums. Um, they did a in 2011, they did a, uh, oh, I suppose each, when each one has an anniversary, they do a, not so much a remix, but a, a remix and a re-recording. So that whatever musicians are playing for the band at the time, they will re-record the album. And yeah, they'll add things, change the arrangements of it all, and make it sound different. Some are better than the original, and some, some I prefer the original. Um, just because you, you know, you just, you like to like that original feel to it, the, the raw, a bit more rawness. Um, definitely the production quality on these newer releases are tenfold better. But uh, especially on Battle Hymns, so I listened to the, this one first the other day. And, um, and while it does sound better from a sonic point of view, um, there's been, been, just been a few things added in there which um, I missed from the original. Um, especially the guitar solo is a bit more sort of, you know, a bit more noodly, I suppose. Yeah, I prefer the, the rawness of the of the battle hymns much better. But anyway, we'll go to the battle hymns here. Um, as you can see from the track, starts off with a death tone. It's just straight off the bat, you know you're in for a pretty heavy album. Um, Metal Days, Fast Taker, Shell Shock, that's their, their war song about Vietnam, um, getting back from Vietnam. Uh, Metal War, that's a good example of, on the remix one, They when they do the crowd, um, crowd chanting in the background. The newer one sounds like the band members just in the studio sort of doing it, where this one sounds like an authentic crowd, which I dare say it is. 
Um, Dark Avenger, that's the one with Orson Welles on it. So, um, yeah, when you first hear that as a young young bloke, then you go and tell your parents, oh, Dad, look at this, Orson Welles. What's going on? So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, William's Tale, there's, your, there's always a Joey DeMaio sort of a solo on every album, which, um, yeah, it's pretty cool when you first listen to it. You think, oh, man, that's pretty cool, but by the, you know, third, fourth, fifth time, it's... I think it's time to hit the old skip button there, but um, still, um, and of course they close with their classic closer epic battle hymns. So yeah, so it's always good to go back to this album every, oh probably every you know every four or five years you go back to it and yeah it puts a bit of a smile on your dial so to speak, uh, brings back good times. Now number four, I was thinking I'll probably go fighting the world on number four. Um, as far as production values, it's really picked up, really picked up here. So yeah, they've gone to a major label here. I think mean, they went to Atlantic, which um, yeah, they probably got a bit more money to spend on production. You can really tell. Um, yeah, of course, starts off with "Fighting the World." Um, when it's that Man of War song, song starts off with "Fight, oh, Fight, Fight, Fight." You know, you're listening to a Man of War album, don't you? Bang straight away. Um, Pretty cool, eh? Apple Music, they have the, the lyrics, lyrics going, not on all songs, only on, on some songs. They just haven't, you know, got the rest, you know, haven't got, a, got them all going quite yet, but on on the more popular songs, they've got the, the, the lyrics on. Um, then we step into Blow Your Speakers, straight away, MTV, so you can tell what this one was on MTV, so this is their, probably their, their biggest hit, if you can regard anything they do as hits. They don't, you know, they're not really in it for the hits, I suppose, but... I suppose they were at a stage of life where they wanted to make some money, and you can't blame them for that, can you? Um, especially cashing on, on that time back then, that's when all this sort of music was really happening. So, perfect timing for it. Um, Carry On, that's their, their real, one of their real heartfelt, inspirational songs. Excellent stuff. Violence and Bloodshed. Um, yeah, it sounds pretty nasty, but it's a, um, actually a pretty cool, catchy sort of song. Um, it's heavy, of course, and fast, but that's, that's what we like, don't we? Um, Defender. Now, this is one of their, their classic epic ones that they have on all albums. Sometimes they have two or three of them. And, um, yeah, it's like a bit of a spoken word, and then it gets into the, the singing. Eric Adams actually goes off on it with his screaming. It's not just screaming for screaming's sake, it's... Just powerful control stuff. Drums of Doom, that's their instrumental. Probably one of the, the better ones on all the albums. Of course, it leads into a cracking song. It leads into Holy War. Um, yeah, look at the first, the first lines of the songs. Unbelievable. Just boom. Nation. Unfortunately, I can't play any music, so I'll just get copyrighted, won't I? So, um, well, I wonder if I just crank it up right now. <laughs> Yeah. Now, while you read the lyrics here, I'm not going to gloat here or nothing, but I'll just tell you what system I'm playing it on and how it really suits his style of music. Um, so, I've got the Apple TV sitting here, and that's going to a Yamaha AVR. Now, what's going on from there is the important thing because I've got the Priac connection, so there's red and white RCA cables coming out of it, which feed into a power amplifier, um, which is around about 300 watts per channel. Um, I need that because I've got speakers that are called MagniPan 0.7 and they need a lot of power to, to, to get them going. But the important thing is, alongside of each speaker is a subwoofer. Um, for the music nerds, for the gear nerds, there's an SBS PB 1000s, two of them. And for this sort of music, oh man, unbelievable. Hairs on the back of their neck, the, the drums, this is thing is on even on this song, Holy War, the, it's just, it's like a panning, and you hear, feel a panning in each ear. Boom, 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 boom. You know, I'm not trying to gloat about my system. It's not, it's not overly expensive or whatever. But um, yeah, this sort of stuff sounds sounds incredible. All right, next, Masters of Revenge. Yeah, there's another, another epic one, and finishes on probably one of their best songs of all time, I think. Black Wind, Fire and Steel. As you see, the lyrics again, awesome stuff. When the, when, when, the, yeah, when the chorus kicks in, it's black, wind, fire, and steel. You can't help it, can you? I don't, I'm normally singing, I don't ever sing in public or on beer or nothing, but black, wind, you can't help it, can you? <laughs> what are you, 
go. So anyway, that's number four. We're going to number three. I would pick, I would toss up between Hale or Kings. I'll go, yeah, go Kings of Metal. This is the, um, the re-recorded one they've, they've done. Um, yeah, even some of the track titles are a bit different. Vi Kingdom Coming instead of Kingdom Coming. That's not a big deal, but yeah, they do um, change it a fair bit. But on this one, I'd, I would probably go back to the original one as well. I like how the original one sounds. The production value is pretty good, so it's not really as required every, as much as their earlier albums, which do sound a bit um, thin, I suppose, but the, the latter albums are top notch. So you don't really miss out on the extra bonus of the re remixes. Um, yeah, you know, this sort of starts off like um, battle the battle hymns um, with the uh, wheels of fire, um, riding you know, riding motorbikes that sort of gear. Um, then we go into Kings of Metal. That's their classic ode to their fans and look at us with the Kings of Metal. We're coming to your town and us. Yeah, you know you know the routine by now. Heart of Steel, um, it sounds like Fighting the World album, doesn't it, pretty much? And that's your, um, your classic motivational, uplifting, uplifting song. Um, Brian Vaughan of the Heart of Steel. And then, then that's your Joey DeMeo bass solo. Um, and then your epic song, um, The Crown and the Ring, a bit of you know, spoken word stuff, and then gets into it. Kingdom Come, oh, I think this is one of their better songs as well. A bit more melodic. Um, yeah, really easy to sing along to. Um, you know, uplifting sort of a song. Yeah, it's a good stuff. Pleasure Slave, I'll probably gloss over that one. You know, when you're a teenager or in your early 20s, you have a bit of a laugh at that one. But um, I suppose I'll, I'll move on. Probably it's in a, in a time and a place, that song. Um, Hail and Kill, you imagine being at a live concert when that's playing I probably wouldn't go near it to be honest with you it'd be a bit scary I reckon <laughs> everyone's singing that thousands of people singing it at the same time um, the Warriors Prayer um, you know it's a bit this is what Baz Metal War get a bad rap about you know a, bit, a little bit a little bit hokey kind of thing a bit cheesy but um, I reckon it's pretty cool you know it makes you smile it makes you, it makes you smile a bit that's all you, that's all you want like a, little, like a little story or a movie playing a um, bit of spoken word and then the music builds up and gets into it. So, um, yeah, I don't mind that. And then, yeah, one of their big epics, Blood of Blood of the Kings. You know, I wish I could play that just straight off the bat. Eric Adams, whoa! Oh, man, unbelievable. You know, normally you're rock driving your car when you're a young fella listening to this and just screaming out the top of your lungs. Hopefully no one hears you. Um, yeah, you know, Brothers, you know, Battle is Raging, choose your side. How good is that? Brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, so Kings of Metal. So number three. Now we'll go to number two. So um, I just I'll just gloss over like the sign of Hammer and In the Glory Ride. I when I first got them, I didn't. I only played them sort of once or twice, and didn't get into them as much. I think because I was enjoying I was enjoying Kings of Metal and the next one. I'll, I'll just you know point out now. But number two is Hail to England. I was playing that so much at the time that you play this once and you just want to go back to Hail to England all the time and play it again and play it again and play it again. So, yeah, it didn't give it much sort of playing time, I suppose. So that's probably the only real reason why I will go to... Oh, wrong one. I'll go to Hail to England. Um, once again, it's got the re-recorded version, but on this one, I do prefer the original once again. It, yeah, it doesn't sound as good quality-wise, but it's just got that... You know, time and place feel to it. You know where you were when you when you're listening to it. So um, yeah, blood of my enemies. Um, yeah, that's you know says it all there, doesn't it? Each dawn I die. These are just real pure metal songs. This is what metal's all about. Um, Kill with power. This probably um, as you can see, this is this is before fighting the world and kings of metal where they date fit into that sort of routine sort of stuff. They just power all the way through. Hail to England. Oh, that's a big epic chatter one. Eh? An American band singing Hail to England. Yeah, that's pretty awesome stuff. Army, Army of Immortals. This is one this, this one where they started doing, um, you know, the ode, ode to their own fans and, and singing about how loyal they are. 
Black Arrows, that's yeah, now we're getting into the Joey DeMeo stuff. That's probably the start of it there. And Bridge of Death, that's probably worth being number two just for this song. Um, it's probably my, yeah, be, be my favourite metal song of all time. Real slow, doomy burner, but then just picks up steam as it goes. Um, yeah, singing about Satan and all that sort of stuff, but it's, a, it's more coming from a, a factual story point of view. Not, not story, but a factual point of view. And, um, yeah, be careful when you cross that bridge of death, because he's, he's waiting for you, basically. Um, yeah, so, excellent stuff. So, my number one, of course, is where it all started. Triumph of Steel. Now you can see the first song, 28, 37, 28 minutes, 37 seconds. That's probably enough to put anybody off. <laughs> but um, that actually drew me in more. Of course, I'm um, yeah, listening to that. Just there, uh, relentless. Drum size, bass size, size here, and bloody, oh, chanting, and oh. The history lesson about Achilles and getting the arrows and Hades and oh, brilliant stuff. But then we get into the classic Metal War stuff after that. Um, this is one of their bigger hits, I suppose. Once again, they're not known that I care about hits or whatever, but they're one of the big um, chanting at festivals and concerts. We are the Metal Warriors. You know, all the poses, leave the hall, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, Ride the Dragon. Yeah, this is probably one of the better albums production-wise too. It sounds incredible on a, on a good system, on headphones and in your car, cranking, uh, hit a dragon, going, oh, brilliant, the whip, oh, no, that's the net, that other one's the whip, isn't it? I shall, I'll come to that in a minute. Spirit Horse of the Cherokee, the horses rumbling at the start of it. Um, another history lessons about the American Indians, which I, yeah, you learn a bit about, you do your own research and learn about that. Um, burning, that's a real, that is a slow burner actually, a real heavy, down low, doomy one. Tower of My Sword, you know, this is probably my favourite, oh, one of my favourite songs as well, as all, of, of, of all time from Metal War. Um, the sword's clashing at the start, <laughs> off she goes. Oh man, it's hard to talk about, isn't it? It's that good. Demon's Whip, that's the one with the whip cracking, isn't it? <laughs> I, haven't heard, I haven't heard this for about probably a good 10 years, so as soon as this video is finished, I'm cranking this this afternoon, that's it. Um, and the Master of the Wind, now this is a this should have been a big hit, like if they cared about hits, but as I say, they, they, you know, that doesn't really matter, but yeah, really uplifting um, song when you're, you know, a bit down and out, you listen to this, it's all about having a bad day and the next two days will be, you know, should be better than the last one and yeah, it's brilliant, you know, one minute they're singing about killing people, not killing people, you know, just battles and wars and pretty dark stuff and they end on something like this. Um, brilliant stuff. It should be like a um, advertising song for um, like things like Beyond Blue and um, you know, like people with mental depression and that sort of stuff. Brilliant stuff. Look at it, look at the words. I wish I could turn the music up, but we all know I'm gonna get copyright, aren't I, on YouTube. So we'll just sit back and yeah, read the lyrics. All to be the master of the wind. Winds of change. Change is always things changing and that sort of thing. Anyway, so I'll sort of take myself out of a moment then and um, we'll end it there. I'll just let that go while I finish my intro. Um, yeah, so Metal Wall. Um, as I said, they're sort of a band that divide people. Even like the heavy metal fans, they normally, you write into them or you seem a bit of a joke. I definitely, definitely don't seem as a joke. The musician wise are uh, top notch, you won't get any better out there. Joey DeMeo is the leader of the band of course, um, good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that he cares about production values and music quality and you know a lot of his albums they bring out are in 5.1 surround sound and their music DVDs are top notch quality. Um, Eric Adams, one of the best vocalists of all time. They've had a lot of different um, drummers and guitarists over the years. Um, the originals were the roster boss He's still playing Men of War stuff. He's a seems like a top light, bit of a legend. Um, Scott Columbus, um, unfortunately, he passed away um, at a you know pretty young age. That was pretty sad. But um, I actually like Rhino, who played on Triumph of Steel. The drums on that album, thunderous. It's like listening to like movie soundtrack, thunder, thunder and lightning going on. 
Awesome stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and like the videos. I think I'll be doing a few more of these top fives or top threes or whatever um, in going into the future. So I will catch you later.